Hello my friends! Welcome back to my channel. This is Sarah with Jujube Crafts and more. Thanks for stopping by today. Today I'm going to bring you two Valentine's Day crafts. So for this first DIY, we're going to start out with four of these blocks. They're the square blocks um, that came from Crafter Square. I was lucky enough to find just four of them. I had not seen them at all at any of my Dollar Trees. So I just painted those all white on all four sides. Or <laughs> all six sides and now I am just putting together some of these tumbling tower blocks. I am just using wood glue and I'm just sticking them together to create one long row and in this row you will have eight nine I think it's nine of them all together and you'll want to create two of these and then you're going to create two that have seven in them. So I'm just gluing them together end by end, making sure that at least one side is lined up. So back to our cubes, I decided that I just wanted to rough up the edges. So I'm just say, taking some sandpaper and I'm just going to distress those edges a little bit. Next, I created some of these little hearts on my Cricut. Um, they were already in design space, so I just had to cut them out. And I am just going to transfer them after I weeded them all out. I'm just gonna transfer them onto my blocks. Now I'm just gonna show you at this point how I did these four hearts, but I created designs for all six sides. And I will make sure that I show you all six sides um, I think at the end of this DIY. So I took pictures of all of them. They turned out so cute. I just I'm in love with this project. And I will plan on making more if I can find more of these cubes. So, and these are like little conversation hearts. They're really cute. Like this one says, text me. And the other one says like, um, love you. And then me plus you. And that one says email me. So they're just really cute little like conversation style hearts. And I just had them, I just cut them in three different kinds of vinyl that I had on hand. So I'm just making sure they're adhered nicely, smoothed down, no air bubbles and all that good stuff. So next we're gonna take our um, blocks, or our tumbling tower block pieces. Now you'll see that I only have three, but in the end I do end up using the same amount. Um, so there's a longer one on the top and then I'll use a longer one on the bottom and the sides are just a little bit shorter. So I'm just trying to gauge of where I wanted to connect my sides to the top. And I just used a pencil to mark the very outside edge of where I wanted to connect the tumbling tower blocks together, if that makes any sense. You'll kind of see in a second, once I get them adhered together, that I put the blocks inside the little cube that I'm making to house them all in, and uh, to make sure that I'm getting the proper sizing. So I'm just using wood glue and hot glue at this point. Um, when I connected the tumbling tower blocks together, I just used the wood glue because I didn't want any little spaces that the hot glue creates. So if you use hot glue in between these, it'll be fine, but you'll want to make sure that um, you measure it out and um, you might have to adjust a little bit for that extra glue. So I'm just trying to get them as precise as possible. And here you can see I'm just placing them, the cubes inside to make sure that my spacing is correct. So my sides were just a tiny bit short, but they weren't short enough for a whole nother tower piece. So I looked around my stash and I realized that the small popsicle sticks are exactly the same width as the side, the short side of the tumbling tower pieces. So I am just gonna cut down two popsicle sticks to glue onto the end of the tumbling tower blocks to create a little more height so that my blocks sit flush. And you'll see kind of 
hear in a second what I'm talking about. So I'm just using straight wood glue here to glue these together. And I created two of them, so um, one for each side. And then when you go to adhere these pieces onto your tumbling tower blocks, um, I found it was easier to just pick one side to make sure that one side was completely flush. So all the pieces were uh, the same, you know, flush. And um, because, you know, I think that most of the time when we cut these little sticks and stuff, they, they can have a little hangover. So um, I just wanted to have any hangover facing the back so that the front was completely um, the same all around. If that makes any sense at all. I know I'm not always the best at explaining things verbally, but I think you can see kind of what I'm talking about here um, visually. So thank goodness for visual because I'd probably be in a lot of trouble if I had to explain everything verbally. I get a little ahead of myself and my brain gets a little jumbled. So. so here you can see that I did add that bottom piece and I made a complete cube here. And then once it was all dry, I let it dry overnight. And then um, I'm just taking some Waverly white chalk paint and I'm just gonna give this whole thing a nice coat of paint. I just used one coat of paint and that's all it needed. So. Then I decided I wanted to dress up the top of this. So I'm just taking some greenery that I had on hand. I think most of this came from Walmart. And I just hot glued a few pieces to the middle there to kind of create a little swag look. And then I'm taking some of this twine and I'm just gonna create a very simple bow using um, multiple strands of twine. I think there's probably six strands here, I'm guessing. I didn't really count it. I just kind of, um, you know, wrapped around what I wanted and thought what I thought would look good. So you just, um, you know, do whatever you want for your top here. It would look super cute with like a um, black and white gingham bow or some other kind of bow or you could put some little flowers or, you know, just whatever you want to put on the top. You don't have to put anything on the top if you don't want. It's it's all good and it's all up to like what you prefer. So I'm just using a good amount of hot glue to attach this bow. And I'm just kind of playing with those little ends because they were a little wonky. I probably need to bring a straight iron into my craft room so that I can like straight iron some of those things to make them all go the way I want them. <laughs> so um, here I'm just cutting off a couple of small pieces of the boxwood greenery just to kind of fill in the back and uh, make it look, you know, nice from all sides really. Even though I don't, I plan on putting this on a shelf where the back won't be showing, so. Uh, but I did want to have it kind of completed around the whole top there. So here you'll see, I'm just gonna, you can see that I created uh, little designs for each sides of these blocks. And if I can link the Cricut uh, Design Space stuff to my description box, I totally will. Um, and then you, you just, go in there and and um, cut out what you'd like so here's the uh, St. Patrick's Day one I created and Easter 4th of July and then this one is just kind of a home one it says this is our happy place and home and has Washington State on it and then this is just our names and so I think those turned out really cute okay DIY number two so for this DIY, I am taking one of these spice racks from Ikea. I love these things. They're only about $5, so they're not, um, you know, it's not a dollar store, but it's definitely, I think, worth the $5. This wood is super thick and heavy, and um, it's just really a fun way to create a little flower box with these. So I took off the hardware, which is the hanger part, the part where you would hang it up on the wall, and I am just filling this in with some wood filler. 
So while that's drying, I'm gonna take some of these small mason jars. I have no idea what size these are. They're just the little ones. And I'm just gonna give them two coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. So I've done these flower boxes before. I will uh, link in the I cards um, the last one I did, but it was brown. And so I wanted something a little bit lighter for spring and for Valentine's Day. So that's why I went with this white. So I cut down two of the five gallon paint stir sticks to go across that are the same length as this box here. And I gave those um, also a coat of paint. And I believe I just did one coat of paint on this because I kind of wanted to distress it and I wasn't too worried about full coverage. So here I am just taking a chippy brush and some of the apple barrel burnt umber and I'm just putting a very, you know, just doing a dry brush on it so that it's got a little bit of color and then I'm kind of going over it to blend it out with my white chalk paint. It was just kind of what was left over on my paintbrush there. So I do the whole entire top of the box, the inside and the outsides. And then I also am going to do the um, paint sticks as well before I adhere them to the box. So once it was all dry, let it dry really nicely, you know, like super well, because if, you, if it's wet at all, your glue will not attach um, properly. So I am doing the wood glue and hot glue combo here because I wanted to be able to move on with my project. But you definitely don't have to do hot glue at this point. You can just do the wood glue, but you'll want to make sure that you let it dry thoroughly before you move on to any more steps. So I just press it firmly into place, make sure that that hot glue is attached before I go to do the other side. Yeah, these Ikea spice racks, I use them for my paint, like my apple barrel paints. I have, I think like five of them on my wall filled with paints and um, I've put ribbons in them. I just, I love these spice racks. I think they're so versatile and fun. I've seen people use them for bookshelves, all kinds of fun stuff. So I wanted to dress up my jars a little bit and I am just going to take some regular jute twine from the Dollar Tree and I am just going to glue those, uh, glue that all the way around the top of these jars. I just wanted to make sure I covered up all of the, um, all of the white part at the top of the jar. So the threading, like where you would thread the lids on and stuff, I wanted to cover that all up. So I did go around it quite a few times um, just to make sure that all the white was covered. Now I didn't end up distressing my jars at all, but you definitely could distress your jars if you wanted to, and that would be super cute as well. So I wanted to just give this a little tiny bit of, like a little pop of color, because I knew that the bottom of these jars would kind of poke through, or peek through the front of my boxes there. So I'm just taking some of this baker's twine that you get from Dollar Tree in the crafter square section, and I'm wrapping two of the jars with the kind of hot pink and white Baker's twine, and then two of them with the red and white Baker's twine. So once everything is dry and complete, you can put your jars in your, in your box. So I was just making sure that my little strings are on the inside so that you can't see them. And then I'm just alternating the colors. So I've got red, pink, red, pink. And then I just put some floral foam in them and I'm covering the top of the floral foam with a little bit of Spanish moss. And then I'm just using some Dollar Tree florals that I picked up 
I, I picked these up last year, but I'm sure that, um, you know, I know Dollar Tree has already got their Valentine's and springtime uh, flowers out. So you could just go and pick out whichever kind of flowers you'd like. And then I'm just adding in a touch of greenery to, uh, you know, for some freshness. It's spring, you know, we're going into spring and I wanted that pop of green. So I do end up going in and putting in some berry garland and some other little things that you'll see in the pictures here, some little twine balls. And I think that this little flower crate turned out so cute. I just love having these around my house. And I can just put different florals in them for different seasons. So let me know in the comments down below which project you liked best today. Thank you so much for stopping by and for watching. I really appreciate you and I hope that you have a safe, happy, and healthy day. And I will talk to you on the next one. Bye!